All right, so there's no denying that Apple pretty much has the gold standard for smartphones these days. I mean, they even paint their phones in a gold aluminum stainless steel finish on the side, but each year the phones keep getting bigger, thinner, the screens are getting taller, and sometimes you just want a smaller phone. So today we're gonna to be looking at a third party Apple ripoff that goes for around $120. That's actually a super small form factor, the world's smallest Apple iPhone. All right, so this is the phone in question. It is the Soyuz Apple knockoff. Now, it does replicate a iPhone fifth generation, the iPhone 5, 5S type of design. It has the bezels around it. It has the chin, the forehead. It has the home button, which is also a fingerprint reader. We're gonna be testing out a couple of features now. In terms of form factor, it is supposedly a 4.5 inch screen. Now, it does have eight gigabytes of storage, so it's not that much, but it is only $120. It is a cheaper alternative to the newer iPhones these days. We're gonna see if it's worth it. All right. So it has similar packaging to the old iPhones. The box is similar to what they used to do, similar to what they do nowadays, except it does slide out a bit easier. You know, with the Apple packaging, it takes a while for it to slide out. You're anticipating it. I'm very, very excited. Oh, my goodness. Would you look at the size of that phone? Holy, when it said 4.5 inches on the box, I didn't believe it. I didn't, I didn't know if they were lying or they were exaggerating how small it is, but that is tiny. So we're gonna set this aside. It's inside of a foam-ish packaging. It's not that eco-friendly. Not what Apple does. All right, so inside of the box, of course, you have a battery. Now, this is unique. All the new smartphones these days have a tempered glass back, which does not allow you to remove the battery itself, and Apple never did allow you. You also have a micro USB, so it does not use a lightning adapter. And of course, it has knockoff earbuds and an Apple-like brick. We're gonna take out the manual just in case, but it's in Chinese, so. That probably won't help. All right, so first we're gonna unbox the actual battery itself. I do not think it has one inside of the actual phone. It's pretty small. In terms of battery size, it is only an 1100 milliamp hour battery. So that is a third of the size of what you would get in the iPhone XS Max. But then again, in terms of form factor, this thing is small. So it comes with a screen protector already built in, which is a nice touch. The back of it does say Soyuz. Soyuz Smart Mini Phone. Now, in terms of weight, it's about half the weight of the iPhone XS Max. So it's not bad, it's not bad. This is going to be interesting. This is, this is unique. You're looking for that small form factor. I think this is the perfect fit. All right, so in terms of buttons on the device, you do have that home button on the front of it. It is a actual button, it does click. You have volume up, volume down on the side of it. On the top of it, you have a sleep wake button, which is a nice touch. On the right hand side, it is completely empty. And on the bottom, you have a headphone jack and a micro USB input. And on the back of it, it is just the plastic faux aluminum. Feels good. It's not terrible. 120 bucks. Let's turn it on. We gotta plug it in first. Oh, it says welcome. Now, the screen isn't the brightest. I wasn't expecting too much from the screen. I am amazed at how small it actually is. Now, there is a screen protector already installed, but it wasn't put on that well, so we're just gonna take it off. All right, so there you see it's at 1% charging. It's not bad though. Like 2.5 inches, that is the smallest smartphone I've ever seen and held. Look at that. Makes this seem massive. Holy. That's a big difference. All right, so the air earbuds that come inside of the box, let's see what they're like. Let's see the quality of them. Hmm. They have sort of this soft touch rubber type of plastic to it. It's okay. I mean, they do the job, I suppose. It's about a meter in length in terms of cable, and it does, of course, plug into the headphone jack on the device. It's not bad. I mean, they are trying to mimic what Apple does. All right, so in terms of the back of the device, you do have two expansion cards over here for actual external storage. And then of course you have a SIM card up here at the top to get your cell reception. We're gonna be comparing the actual camera quality after compared to the newest iPhone. 
I don't think it's going to be that much of a comparison, but it is important if your phone can take photos. So we slide this up and then it slides down. Okay, so to take off the back, you slide it up and then pull it off. Now we know. All right. What's it at? It's at 100% charge. Would you look at that quick charging? I don't know if that's accurate. Welcome. All right, here we go. So it has the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus background to it. That little tiny fish thing, it's not bad. So we're gonna click the home button. We're gonna go through all this to unlock. I believe you swipe up. The battery is getting low. It's at 4%. So we're just gonna keep this plugged in while we're using it. It said it was at 100. It lied. All right, to see all your apps, touch the circle. So I think it's similar to this is obviously based off of Android. It's not iOS. So let's click the circle. We'll click in the circle. Maybe not. All right, the circle is here at the bottom. I'm touching the circle. All right, no SIM one, no SIM two. Oh, so it has two SIM card slots. Not expandable storage. That's unique. You want a business and a personal phone call in this? We're gonna click okay. Now we're gonna go into all of our apps. We're gonna see what's installed. Choose some apps, add it to your home screen, touch and hold it. So in terms of apps that you get, of course you have the basic Apple apps or at least a skin over the Android apps to make it look like an Apple phone. You have calendar, calculator, clock, contacts, camera, of course. You have FM radio, that's a unique one. I do not have that on my phone. Gallery, messaging, of course. And you have the Play Store because this is an Android based device. Now, if I click the home button, it should take me home, which it does. You do of course have your default home screen. You can customize it like you can on any Android. You swipe over, you have more apps. And one thing I do like is that the background, if you notice while I swipe, it moves as well. It's very interesting, very cool. It's camera testing time. So we have of course our mighty trusty unboxing knife. We're gonna be taking a photo of each of these cameras because that is an important feature on any smartphone. How good is the camera? So, <laughs> I think it's like two megapixels. Okay. Well, let's take that photo. How do I take that photo? Is that a photo? I just took a photo. How do I go to gallery? Oh my. Can you even see that knife? You cannot even see that knife. It looks... It looks rough. It's it's not it's not the greatest camera. Let's try the selfie camera. Let's see how good that is. You never know. So camera. Oh, gotta go back. I just want to take a new photo. We're gonna switch the camera. Take a selfie. <laughs> oh my! Those highlights are blown out. Can you guys see that? Whenever you see something that's pure white, that means it's clipped, and that means there's no detail in it. And my face looks like a ghost. I don't need no makeup for Halloween. That is, I mean, that's expected. Like I mentioned before, it does have eight gigabytes of storage inside of it. So if you do wanna take a lot of photos with this camera, you know, you wanna be like a little spy, take little tiny photos with a small camera, you can do that. It is pretty good for its form factor, 2.5 inch display. All right, so this is arguably the smallest iPhone in the world, 4.5 inch touch display. It's not bad, the cameras on it are not the greatest, but it does take photos. Will I recommend it? I mean, if you're looking for something like this, you are in quite a niche. It is a super tiny, look, look at this. Look at the size difference between the two of these. If you want something that's super small, super small form factor with two SIM cards, eight gigabytes of storage, I would recommend it. It's not bad. It feels like a decent quality phone. I would never use it. There's there's not much you can do, and I don't even know if I can play Angry Birds on this, or Fortnite. That's important these days. Can you play Fortnite on it? No, you can't, not on this phone. Imagine trying to play Fortnite on this thing. Oh, that would be terrible. Your thumbs would cover the whole screen. So for 120 bucks, it's not a bad phone. I wouldn't recommend it unless you know you need it. It's just cool. It's a cool little tiny phone. And it's gold, that's important. And psych. It's silver, you can get it in gold. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparison with the world's smallest Apple phone and the latest 
iPhone XS Max. I mean, it just blew it out of the water. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Would you ever pick up a phone this small? Also, if you have any other cool phones that you want us to check out, let us know in the comments below. You might get chosen to be shouted out. And subscribe if you're new.